Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so we have uh, looked at this, actuated this theory and all these uh, for the propeller. Now there is uh, one more topic that uh, I would like to discuss on these things is the blade uh, configurations or the uh, blade element considerations. So let us uh, uh, finish that discussion so that that will pretty much um, conclude the discussion on propeller and all these. So, just an uh, this is an schematic which um, give you an idea about the any blade element theory. So, just look at the different cross sections and all these things because this is um, quite involved and there are multiple parameters which are also involved there. So, this is some now uh, this is called blade element uh, consideration or theory. So, one can think about blade element theory. So, this is just like wing theory. So, here the blade is divided into small sections which are handled independently from each other. Each segment has a chord, a blade angle associated. So, each segment they will have an chord, will have a blade angle and associated air foil characteristics. The isolated air foil assumption is found to be substantially correct for two or three bladed propeller except near hub. Now, we can have a given radius S, a given uh, radius R and circumferential distance between two successive blades uh, spacing which is S, while the length of the blade section between leading and trailing edges, uh, so that is chord C. So, S by C for two or three bladed propellers are much greater than, um, so S by C would be much greater than 1 for 2 or 3 bladed propeller. So, that justifies the use of isolated aerofoil characteristics in this theory. So, where the multi blade propeller where this S by S ratio to be if S by C ratio to be order of 1 then uh, or less than 1. So, there it can be treated as cascade. So, since here is by C greater than 1, we can treat them an individual aerofoil. Now, one can see the small aerofoil sections and then they are the forces like lift and drag can be applied and we can determine the rest of the calculation. So, so there are let us say a differential blade chord which is uh, C with D R and at the at radius R ok from the propeller axis as shown here. So, from here this is at a R this is D R. Now, the element is shown acting under the influence of rotational speed V t and the forward speed V prime. 
and the induced velocity w prime. So, the resultant velocity vector v r would be v prime plus v t plus w plus, where the axial velocity and the rotational velocities are given as v prime is v 1 plus a and v t is omega r 1 minus a omega. The relative fluid velocity varies from half to t primarily under the influence of the rotational velocity which is the component of omega r and the factor a. So, here you can see all the velocity vectors and the forces which are shown at the section radius r and r plus delta r whose chord length is c. So, the geometric pitch angle beta is or the blade angle is a plus phi. So, this is geometric pitch angle or blade angle ok, where uh, sorry this is alpha plus phi, where alpha is the angle of attack and phi is the advance angle ok. So, this gives us tan phi equals to v 1 into 1 plus a divided by omega r 1 minus a omega. Now, we can define a dimensionless radius that is x equal to r by capital R, then this tan phi can be written as v 1 1 plus a omega r 1 minus a omega to be j 1 plus a pi x 1 minus a omega, where beta is calculated based uh, advance propeller during the revolution with geometric pitch is p. So, tan beta is p by pi d, here p is geometric pitch. Now, the radial pitch distribution will be specified for a given blade and uh, but a representative pitch is required as the reference radius. Now, overall the solid body pitch may be varied by rotation of the blade about its radial axis. Now, we can calculate the thrust and the torque. Now, the axial and tangential forces on the blade element generate the thrust let us say delta t which is delta L cos phi minus delta d sin phi which is L cos phi minus d sin phi into d r and torque which is del f q which is del q by r is written as del L a delta L sin phi minus a delta d cos phi which is L sin phi plus d cos phi dr. So, del L is the lift, del D is the drag force on the blade element. Now, introducing other definitions of the lift and drag coefficient C L and C D with the dynamic pressure Q, this C L could be defined as L by half rho V R square C. 
C D is D by half rho V R square C, where Q is one half rho V square. So, these are the, so also we can write V R is V into 1 plus A by sin phi, the relative velocity. This is relative velocity. Now, we use all these things there and assume, assuming B is number of blades, number of blades, what we can write del T by del R is B C Q 1 plus A square C L cos phi minus C D sin phi divided by sin square phi and del Q by del R is B R C Q whole square C L sin phi plus C D cos phi by sin square phi. Now, with x equal to r by r and the local solidity is sigma r at station r, where we can define sigma r is b c y pi r. Then the solidity at the propeller tip at propeller tip the sigma r is b c by pi r which is x sigma r. Now, so the now we can non dimensionalize the thrust force. So, non dimensionalizing the thrust force by rho n square d4 and non dimensionalize the torque by rho n square d to the power 5, we can get the torque coefficient C q. So, let us see how they look like, like d c t by d x which would be pi by 8 sigma r j square 1 plus a whole square C L cos phi minus C D sin phi, where by sin square phi d c q by d x which is pi by 16 sigma r j square 1 plus a whole square x c l sin phi c d cos phi by sin square phi. So, we get these two. Now, the relation between the drag and lift forces on blade element can be written as tan epsilon is L by D which is C L by C D. Now, once we put this back, we write C T by D x equals to pi by 8 sigma r j square 1 plus a whole square C L cot phi minus 
tan epsilon sin phi. Okay. And similarly, we write d c q by d x is pi by 16 sigma r g square 1 plus a whole square x c l cot phi tan phi plus tan epsilon by sin phi. So, once we integrate this by integrating we can find T and Q the thrust and the torque. So, those things can be obtained easily. Now, the other thing which can be calculated is the propulsive efficiency. So, now we can look at propulsive efficiency. So, propulsive efficiency for a blade element is defined as the ratio between useful work is useful work to the supplied torque. So, that means, eta d e v d t by omega del q. Now, already the derived equation for del t del q if we use all this what we can write eta b e is omega del q which is 1 minus a omega 1 minus a r tan phi del t by del q 1 minus a omega divided by 1 minus a tan phi del t by del q by r. Okay. So, what we can get is that we write this here as let us say eta b e 1 minus a omega by 1 minus a into tan phi C L cos phi minus C D sin phi by C L sin phi plus C D sin phi which is 1 minus A omega tan phi 1 minus tan epsilon sin phi by tan epsilon plus tan phi. So, hence we can get 1 minus a omega 1 by a tan phi by tan phi plus e. So, the local propeller efficiency what we can see from here is dependent on the angle epsilon of tan inverse C d by C l and the interference factors which are a, a omega these factors. So, you can one can plot and see the other things. So, 
what happens there could be two possibilities uh, let us say eta B E is 100 percent this is a straight uh, case where epsilon would be A would be A omega is 0 or second case eta B E it could be variable where epsilon is not equals to 0 a is not equals to 0, a omega not equals to 0. In that case, the blade efficiency has 0 value when phi is 0 and phi is 90 degree minus epsilon. So, in between value, the blade element efficiency always uh, retains a. So, this is how one can look at that eta B e with uh, this is phi. So, this goes like somewhere and comes down. So, somewhere middle it is the maximum which is around 45 degree minus epsilon by 2. And so, and the other would be a flat line when it is 100 percent when a, a omega all 0. So, that is how it actually varies and uh, now we can have some uh, dimensionless parameters like there are uh, uh, different dimensionless parameters which could be um, uh, like. So, this define uh, and required to define the performance of the fixed width propeller. So, dimension less parameters where we can have. So, actually it requires uh, 9 independent variable, 9 independent variables to define this like in subsonic uh, 9 independent variables are required. So, like thrust force, torque, power, air density, compressibility, air viscosity, propeller diameter, approach speed, rotational speed and these are the basket of torque Q, P, rho, beta, mu, d, v, n. Now, we have only three fundamental units. So, we require 6 dimensionless group. So, 9 minus 3, 6 dimensionless groups. So, number 1 or A is first coefficient, which is C t is t by rho n square d 4 or T c is T rho v square by d square. B torque coefficient C q which is q by rho n square d 5 or q c is q by rho v square d 5. Then we have power coefficient which is C p that is p by rho n cube d 5. Then the there could be a relation between power and torque coefficients which could be C p equals to p by rho n cube d 5 which is 2 pi n q rho n cube by d 5 which is 2 pi c q. Then uh, advance ratio, advance ratio which is j that is v by n d, then Reynolds number v d rho by mu, then we can have Mach number which is v by a that is v by root gamma r t 
then also the the first four dimensional and quantities can be correlated like uh, C t equals to T c j square, uh, C q is q c j square and another important dimensional quantity is the speed power coefficient which is denoted as C s or sometimes C p s which is as rho v phi by p n square to the power 1 by 5 or C s phi equals to rho v phi by p n square rho n cube d phi by p into v phi by n phi d phi that is j phi by c p or c s equals to j by c p 1 to the power 5. So, we can also again using this uh, relationship that we obtain again those uh, factors that a and b we can write using these b equals to 2 a equals to minus 1 plus minus 1 plus 8 by pi T c. Now, the actual propulsive efficiency can be now expressed eta p equals to T v by p which is T v by omega q j c t by 2 pi c q which is j c t by c p. So, typically eta f of the fraud efficiencies could be 1. Now, also in uh, actual propulsion efficiency is much less than the fraud efficiency because of some losses which are not involved in the actuator disk theory which could arise from let us say uh, rotational flow, rotational flow. So, these losses could arise from there profile drag the flow over the propeller blades when there would be profile drag or the form drag or the viscous friction. So, these are also ignored in the disk theory. So, this is a rotational flow about the rotor axis in the wake then uh, interference interference effect that is also ignored then compressibility effect. So, these are actually not there and two other uh, important parameters relevant to propeller power are power loading and this. So, the power loading or P L is P by d square which is C P rho n cube d 5 by d square. C p by j cube rho v cube and activity factor which is a f a f which is defined as 10 to the power 5 root 2 tip c by d r by d cube d r by d. So, these are also can be calculated and now there are propeller performance. So, the I mean there are different kind of propellers which are used based on uh, like NACA series. So, these are based on NACA series. So, it could be 4424 or something like that, 4418, 2415 and one can do and there are different series which are available and their performance are kind of determined how this, I mean one can see this curve, how the propeller efficiency 
and the advanced ratio now the different blade. So, this is eta p versus j for two bladed propeller at different pitch. So, you can see how and the beta is the pitch angle like beta. So, one can see that how these things are uh, varying this curve, give you an idea how things changes uh, with the change in this kind of properties as such. And the other thing which could be interesting to see is that how the variation of the propeller efficiency um, that is also important like this. This is also the variation of propeller efficiency with j advance ratio. So, there is a small positive angle of attack, there could be large positive angle of attack. So, one can see the different variations and then that can be sort of estimated like this. So, essentially these factors are one has to take into kind of consideration when talking about these propeller blades like their material, their design consideration and we have talked about two different theories which are simplistic model. Obviously, one can do detail um, testing in kind of wind channel or with properly equipped uh, instrument or one can do computational analysis to look at the flow field and all this effect and then finally, find out all this power coefficient, torque, efficiency and everything. So, that is pretty much uh, will uh, kind of concludes the discussion on propeller and all this. We will move to the other uh, engines in the next class one. Thank you.